My name is uh, Ryan Walker. I'm Senior Mining Analyst at Echelon Capital Markets with another installment of our mining Q&A series. Today we have uh, Haya Don, CEO and co-founder of Osino Resources with us. Osino is currently exploring and drilling off uh, what looks to be a sizable resource on their strategically large land package in Namibia. Uh, Haya, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks Ryan. Great to be with you again. I know you have a long history with us and with the project, so it's great to talk to you. Great, thanks for taking the time. Uh, so I guess initially we should just uh, ask, you know, what is the current COVID situation with you guys? Are your operations suspended? Uh, you ever have any personnel test positive? Uh, what, what's the status in that regard? No, so Namibia, the status at the moment is um, that there's a limited lockdown in place in Namibia due to COVID, but um, Namibia has very few cases. I believe it's around in the low 30s, not 30,000s, 30s. It's literally minimal. Um, but because it's on the border of South Africa, and South Africa has a, has a much higher concentration of cases, Namibia has, seems to be fairly careful. So the borders are closed. You cannot travel there or leave Namibia. But operationally for us as a drilling company, we, um, we started drilling again about three or four weeks ago uh, when the lockdown uh, progressively got eased. Um, and we're drilling as we speak. I mean, we do have the, the usual COVID precautions in place, but we haven't had a case. We're in a pretty isolated place, so I think we are, we are safe. I mean, Namibia recently um, went back up a notch, so they um, tightened their COVID um, uh, sort of lockdown regulations again. But we applied for a special dispensation to keep drilling, which, which we received literally a few days ago. So at the moment, for us, it's business as usual. Okay, that's great to hear that nobody's been infected. That's great. So I guess let's just jump right in. You mentioned you're back up and drilling. What, what are the, the drill plans for this year? Uh, are you fully permitted, fully funded for the, the work you plan? Yes, we are fully permitted. I mean, the way drilling, drill permitting works in Namibia is you, you, have to, you have to get an environmental clearance certificate. So the Namibia is quite proactive in its regulation. So we got that in the beginning. Um, so the permits are in place. We... Um, announced our drill program for 2020 earlier this year, comprising roughly 20,000 meters. Um, but then we drilled four holes in March when we started, and then we got interrupted by the lockdown. So we were locked down for about six weeks, during which time we did other useful stuff. Um, and as I said just now, we started drilling again three weeks ago, and we're working our way through this program. We are also um, adding to our infrastructure and logistics, like vehicles, geologists, and um, recently acquired a large core shed, et cetera, because the plan is to increase that drilling towards the end of the year. I think, um, you know, the project's evolving very nicely. We're trying to get as many holes into it as we practically can. Okay. And so the bulk of the drilling that, that's ongoing, uh, primarily aimed at Twin Hills Central, I would imagine. Yeah, about three quarters Twin Hills Central and about a quarter, um, let's call it brownfields exploration, you know, to remind you, your viewers, or I mean, as you, as you described in your research report, so Twin Hills is a large sort of 15 kilometer gold system. It's got a, a big surface footprint, but it's entirely under cover. So it's fairly complicated exploration, structurally controlled, and we use MAG um, as a proxy for structure. Now, yeah, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. So three quarters of the drilling, is intended to test the Twin Hill Central, which is sort of the pearl on that string, if you to use that analogy. Um, and that drilling is intended for resource definition and, and, and expansion. We don't have a resource yet, but I think we will be there fairly soon, like in about six months time towards the end of the year. Um, we should be there, let's say Q1 next year, definitely. Let, let's give myself a bit of gap. So therefore to reiterate, three quarters of the drilling into resource definition and expansion and about one quarter of the drilling into um, brownfields exploration and real uh, new exploration. Okay, that's great. And so you mentioned a resource probably early next year. What would be the goal there? And I, I don't want to nail you down to a specific number, but what, what, would, you, what would success look like as far as you're concerned with the, the maiden resource? Uh, you know that it, we, we keep moving the goalposts because to remind you, you know, the company, our vision a while ago was to make Namibia's next significant gold, uh, gold discovery or to find Namibia's next significant gold deposit. We've achieved that. But, so then my initial goal became to delineate something that has at least a million answers because I think that's just the sort of uh, credibility 
threshold. Sure. And I th even though we haven't got a 43101 resource out yet, um, we do have a good handle using LeapFrog and other internal mechanisms that are non-code code compliant. We have a good handle where we're heading. And I can tell you that my maiden resource aim is substantial than that. So I think anything between one and a half or two million answers is the target. And I think you asked me what would be a real success would be something closer to two million answers. I think one and a half million answers is in inverted commas uh, in the bag already. Of course, the other qu question that you'll ask is what at what grade? I can't tell you that. But I think our resource grade looks like it's going to shape up to be similar to the other two gold mines on the belt, which is Ochikoto, which B2 Gold owns, and Navachap. Um, so we're heading in that direction. So I think anything between between one and one and a half grams per ton, probably initially closer to sort of 1.1, 1.2, that sort of number, I think ex we, we, we can expect. It. Okay, great. And then outside of Twin Hills Central, are there any, there are numerous other targets out there on your land package. Are there any that you're particularly excited to get into and, and will in, indeed test this year? Yeah, so I think in terms of, let's say, working our way down in terms of level of advancement, so Twin Hill Central clearly is, is a discovery has been made that drill, drill process is, is not quite mechanical, but it is largely mechanical. And then in the vicinity of Twin Hill Central, basically within, within close trucking distance, like a five kilometer radius, i.e. within that Twin Hills gold system, we have what we call Twin Hills West, which we're quite excited about. I mean, Twin Hills West is, is, sits on the same structure. It has already been, we've gotten about four drill holes into it. We've already intercepted some gold, like 10 meters at a gram or so. It's fairly, fairly uh, small intercept so far, but it does have a large um, arsenic anomaly, surface anomaly, much larger than the gold anomaly. And arsenic is obviously an indicator of arsenopyrite, which in turn seems to be associated with higher grades. So yes, 20 Hill Central, we've just drilled. We actually, in fact, right now today, we're drilling the fourth hole on Twin Hills West. Sorry, Twin Hills West, that is. Okay. Um, so if we make a new discovery there, that would be great. That opens an entire new satellite deposit, like a new front to the west. And then we've got similar um, targets to the east. One of them is called Clouds, which is, again, the eastern strike extension of Twin Hills Central. So we, we, we quite pleased about that. Just in that answer, you, you kind of mentioned an association with higher grades with uh, Arsino Pyrite, which might, you know, some investors uh, might pique their interest there, uh, you know, could lead to refractory gold issues in some cases. I know metallurgy, uh, it, you know, is being done right now, test work's being done and it's due later this year, but can you maybe give us some color on that? Uh, is sure. it an issue? Yes, no, we don't expect it to be an issue. Remember that all the deposits on this belt are sulfides, firstly, and a lot of people think sulfides is equivalent to bad. It's not like that. Um, so Ochikoto is a sulfide deposit, and so is Namachap, and neither of them have any particular metallurgical issues. They've got a straight CIL flow sheet, except that in Ochikoto's case, which Peter Gold owns, um, they have a huge gravity circuit up front because of the nuggety, nuggety and free nature of their gold. They extract 60% or even 70% of their gold with gravity only, and that's why they have such high recovery. So they're shooting out the lights in terms of metallurgy. Our base case, at the moment, it's too, too, too early to tell whether we would be able to shoot out the lights. But our base case is that we are going to have easily treatable metallurgy, and that's based, to, that's not to answer your question, it's based on petrography and thin sections that we took, or that, that work that we did earlier this year, which indicates that the gold grains are free within the sulfide matrix. Um, and we followed that up with leach test work, which we're just waiting for the results. Any day they should be in. If that leach test work shows that we don't have a recovery problem, i.e. the ore is free milling, that's our base case, then we will carry on with much more detailed med test work to optimize the flow sheet. But at the moment, it looks like we will have free milling, standard, easily treatable um, ore. That, that's our base case. So therefore, even though we have the arsenopyrite, arsenopyrite, isn't always uh, problematic because I mean, okay. we, we don't know yet how much of the gold is in the Arsino Pyrite as of the other sulfides, but just because it's there doesn't mean it's, it's a showstopper.
just, I guess, jumping around a little bit, going back to Twin Hills Central. Uh, so, you know, I guess the last drilling kind of stretched that strike out to about 1.3 kilometers, uh, roughly 160 meters deep. Are you seeing anything at depth as far as grades increasing, uh, maybe getting into some type of feeder structure down there? And will that be something that'll be tested during the, the ongoing drilling program? Ooh, hard to say. Uh, you got me on that. I might have to go back to my geos and ask. I mean, we certainly see the grade increasing from east to west, uh, and our exploration is generally going in that direction. So um, that seems to be a trend. Grade improving as we go deeper, not necessarily. I think the real question is um, what direction or how the high grade shoots are oriented. And it seems like they are oriented roughly in a sort of uh, north easterly southwesterly direction i.e with a with a strike of that zone um but to me I'll, I'll answer your question differently i think there, there's a lot of volume potential as we go down because that syncline as you say has only been tested down to 160 meters with those inclined holes i'm sort of indicating on the screen here um but you know it's open at depth and we've got a up to 100 150 meter thick package and as that goes down we actually in the last two weeks we drilled a couple of very deep holes, 350 to 400 meters depth, to intersect that package deeper. So that could be that could be a very nice volume um, kicker. Will be, I'm fairly certain. Uh, what the grades will be is hard to say at this stage, but I do think we'll we'll, we'll find higher grades elsewhere and at depth. Uh, so you've mentioned the Ojikoto mine a, a couple times uh, during the interview so far, and a lot of investors probably remember you from Oryx Gold from several years ago. Obviously, uh, that was a great success. Uh, you were co-founder there as well. Uh, sold the B2 Gold in 2011, and that's just been a great mine for them ever since. Uh, so can you maybe con contrast and compare the experience there with what, what you're experiencing now at uh, Twin Hills? Yeah, thanks. Um, you know, obviously, that Ochikota experience has been great for us because we, we know that deposit intimately, and um, we were obviously involved in advancing it. But B2 then turned it into the success, which it is now. And that uh, has been very good for us. So in terms of comparison, uh, one thing I can say certainly is that the, the geological architecture of Ochikoto looks very similar to Twin Hills or vice versa. So it's basically a thrusting environment, folding and faulting. You have these uh, uh, parasitic folds at the prospect scale all the way down to the centimeter scale. And the hinge zones in those Z folds seem to be the controlling features for the, for the grades. So that's very positive. We're very encouraged that we have uh, an increasing understanding of the structure and it looks similar to Ochikoto and also the size and the scale is similar to Ochikoto. So that gives us an idea, you know, we're heading in the right direction. What has encouraged us a lot um, is our hit rate has been quite a bit better than the early hit rate at Ochikoto. If you look at the type of intersects that, that intersections that we've achieved with fairly limited drilling, um, you know, our package, our sedimentary package seems to be thicker than Ochikoto. The grades initially looked a little bit lower, but um, that seems to be coming into its own now. So with the sort of early stage um, internal management assessments we've done with regard to volumes, like resource volumes and grades, and I mean, this stuff isn't 43101 compliant, and that's why I should be careful how I talk about it, but I've got a, it gives me enough comfort to say that with the same amount of drilling, um, we will. We should have a substantially larger maiden resource than Ochikoto. Ochikoto okay. came out five years after discovery. They came out with twenty-five thousand meters at point. Sorry, five years after discovery, after twenty-five thousand meters of drilling, they came up with about just under a million ounces at point nine grams per ton. So I, I feel fairly confident that we're going to exceed that substantially with a similar amount of drilling. Um, and, and you know those numbers will come out in six, six to nine months' time. But we would have done it within 18 months with Ochikoto. It took five years, another five years uh, to PEA stage, another three years to be built. So my feeling was with Twin Hills as compared to Ochikoto, it, the resource will grow faster. It will quickly look similar to Ochikoto in terms of size and grade. But I think in the development timeline will be substantially compressed. And obviously that's because we have more, more conviction, better funding, better gold market uh, and so forth. Great. No, uh, that, I mean, I, I covered that story back in the day and it, it was a great story. It obviously ended well. Uh, so congratulations on that one. I look, look forward to hopefully a similar, if not better outcome here. Um, 
So just to kind of uh, encapsulate the whole interview and just you know highlight what catalysts we might expect uh, during the balance of 2020 that, that are really going to drive the shares, uh, if you could give us kind of the, the highlights there, what you think uh, would propel this. Yes, I will. Okay, thank you. No, I just wanted to acknowledge, you know, you were the first analyst that actually covered Oryx Gold back in the day. So it's nice to go full circle again with you. Um, so to come to the catalyst, well, firstly, in about the next couple of weeks, literally, I think two weeks from now, so two, three weeks from now, like within June, we will announce the um, leach test work. So the MET test work that we discussed earlier, that's, that's an important one. Um, then from sometime in July, we will have drill results. You know, we've done another 2,000 meters of drilling already completed since the lockdown ended. So I think those results will come out sometime in July. But, um, you know, generally we'll try and announce results in batches rather than hole by hole. Um, okay. Therefore, July, August, draw results and then semi-regularly draw results on an ongoing basis. I think there, will, there might be the occasional um, ongoing consolidation of ground, opportunistic uh, acquisition of ground. Um, and then later in the year, no, let's me, let me say early in the new year, the important one will be the maiden resource. Sure. Of course, as we go along, if, there's, if there are noteworthy, noteworthy um, technical uh, milestones that we reach in the next six months, we'll put that out. I mean, we are doing so much work in the background, I should just say. Um, it's, 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 it's a lot more than just drilling. You know, we're doing a lot of the preparatory work in, that would go into a PEA and into development type work like geotech, med test work, EIA baseline studies. Lots of that work has been initiated and, and so we might report on some of that from time to time and I do think it's important. I mean, the other one that I should mention is the acquisition of surface rights is a key aspect. And I think, I hope that we will be able to report on that in the next few months because um, I mean, we're dealing with a single rancher and we're very interested in acquiring that land. And we did the same thing again with Ochikota, it's the same playbook. Back then, that was the first thing we did is we acquired the surface rights and it, it, it made the permitting of that mine eventually by B2Gold so much easier. So we're just looking to do the same that we did with, um, with Ochikoto back then. Great. Well, I mean, not only do you need to drill off a resource, it's important to, to get those major de-riskings, the, the land and, and the metallurgy sorted out uh, even, even early on. So that, that's good to hear. And so it sounds like you guys are, are very busy. Uh, so thanks for taking the time to give us an update today. And, you know, hopefully we can reconnect in maybe two months and get another update and see how things have, have, have gone. And we'll have some, some more uh, recent drill results to talk about. So again, thank you very much. We appreciate uh, you taking the time for us today. Thank you very much, Ryan. Thank you for the effort that you guys are putting into this to get the story out there on our behalf. So yeah, we look forward to talking to you again. Great. Thank you. Care. Thanks. Mm -hmm.